Hey everybody, it's CJ. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about the TIE, the TIE Advanced Prototype, uh, the Inquisitor's TIE Fighter, to be more specific. Um, I know that we are, they, they've released some previews for some stuff as far as Imperial, uh, I forget what they're called, I think it's like Imperial Veterans, which is like a TIE Defender and something else, I don't even know what it is, but... You know, we'll go ahead and get into those soon. We still have to cover Wave 7. We still have to cover uh, what's come out for Wave 8, the new core set. We have a lot of stuff a lot of stuff to cover still. But I want to go ahead and cover this preview for the TIE Inquisitor's TIE Fighter. Or for the Inquisitor's TIE Fighter. Which is the TIE Advanced Prototype. Now the first thing you're going to see here on the screen is the spread. Uh, the spread looks like it has the... Sinar Test Pilot, which is a Pilot Skill 2 guy. Uh, Baron something, Pilot Skill 4. Valen Rudor at 6, and the Inquisitor at 8. It looks like the upgrade cards are Deadeye Homing Missiles, the XX 23 S Thread Tracers, Guidance Chip, and uh, TIE slash V1. And because of its normal accoutrement of things, that you require with the ship, such as your shield tokens, target locks, evades, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get into this a little bit here. We're going to start with the lowest pilot skill pilot. They've revealed three of the four pilots. The first one is the Sinar Test Pilot. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Sinar Test Pilot gives us our base stat line for this, the TIE Advanced Prototype, which is spelled TIE ADV Period Prototype. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, he's pilot skill 2, 2 attack, 3 evade, 2 hull, 2 shields. Not quite as beefy as the standard TIE advanced. It has focus, target lock, barrel roll, and boost as actions. It has a missile upgrade slot and costs 16 points. The Sinar test pilot, just looking at it, I don't think it's going to be as powerful as, say, the current incarnation of the TIE advanced. But it does give you a slightly more janky TIE Fighter. We'll just put it that way. Especially with boost and barrel roll both being on it. You could essentially build a small swarm of PS2 Sinar guys with uh, the ability to boost around to give them better arcs if you need to. So, you know, not, not a bad card. Not great overall. It does have two shields, so it's a benefit over the standard TIE Fighter. It's, I believe, a benefit over the TIE FL. This is almost like a better TIE FO as far as some aspects worse than others. So next we have Valen Rudor. Valen Rudor is pilot skill 6. 2 attack, 3 evade, 2 hull, 2 shield. Standard, uh, <coughs> excuse me, standard action bar that the, the signer guy comes with. Focus, target lock, barrel roll boost has an EPT slot and a missile slot, and is 22 points. For a pilot skill 6 AC, he's not, a bad, it's not badly costed. I think that, you know, it, at 22, he's okay. Especially given his ability, which is after defending, you may perform a free action. So, he's actually someone you want to keep at pilot skill 6. Simply because you don't want him shooting first. You want him to shoot after other people have shot. Because you can give him an evade token, and after he defends, he can, if you have pushed the limit on him, for example, focus and target lock someone. So, he's unique in that he has an ability similar to one of the tie, uh I forget which tie interceptor it is who can boost her barrel roll after he attacks. He does this after he defends, and he can do any of his actions. So if you're in a position where you cannot attack someone, then you get attacked, you can boost into and get them into your arc. So he's very, very maneuverable, very interesting. You want to keep him in that mid-tier simply because he does benefit from being in that mid-tier. The final... TIE Advanced Prototype Pilot we have is the Inquisitor, and his name is the Inquisitor. He's Pilot Skill 8, 
two attack, three evade, two hull, two shield, same, same action bar, same upgrades as Valon with the EPT and the missile. He's 25 points, so he's not really that highly costed. Um, I think he, the, the, this series of tie advanced are actually costed properly to what they can do. Um, his ability is when attacking with your primary weapon at range 2 to 3, treat the range of the attack as range 1. So essentially he's a 3 attack tie advanced prototype. And like I said, we'll get into that whole advanced thing later on. So he's a very good pilot, very interesting pilot because he stays at range one the whole time when he's attacking. He still gets his defending bonuses. So he can hang out at range three. Uh, soon to your fell, auto thrusters don't kick off on him. Same with A-wings. Same with the Star Viper. Anything with auto thrusters, he ignores them because you're effectively at range one for him. He's always throwing three dice because you're effectively at range one for him. In all honesty, he is a prime candidate for Predator. Because now you can go and just re-roll dice. You know, he's not he's not as action dependent. Uh, because he always has that range bonus. So the next thing we're going to get into here is the TIE V1 title. The TIE V1 title says specifically at the bottom, TIE ADV period prototype only title. After you acquire a target lock, you may perform a free evade action. It's one point. Okay. This title makes the TIE advanced prototype very cost, uh, very not cost efficient. Let's see what I'm looking for here. It makes it very action efficient because now if you have pushed the limit on them, for example, you can focus target lock, you gain an evade token. It's pretty damn good. You can just target lock, you gain an evade token. I like this title. The problem that comes in, and I'm actually going to pull it up because I want to put this into the video, um, is there's been some uh, there's been some debate. Now, in the rulebook for X-wing, in the the current rulebook, it pretty much states that things have to have the exact wording of what is on them for it to apply. Um, actually, give me one moment. I'm going to go get the rulebook. I'm going to pause this, and I'll be right back. Okay. Um, so, in the rules, the new rulebook, which comes with the new core set, on page 20, I guess you would call it paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It says, ship type only. In bold letters, it's bulleted. This upgrade can only be equipped to a ship of the specified type. If the ship's type includes the entirety of the restricted type, and it, it, can, it can equip that upgrade. For example, a TIE slash FO fighter can equip an upgrade restricted to TIE fighter only. Okay, so this has caused a lot of contention in the X-Wing community. Um, and we're going to go on a slight tangent here real quick, and we'll come back. So, essentially what happened is you have the TIE Advanced prototype, which is spelled TIE ADV period prototype. Um, and then you have a title for the TIE Advanced prototype, which also says TIE ADV period prototype only. Alright, so... We have a precedent for a upgrade being available only to the TIE Advanced Prototype only. And it, it uses the exact same spelling of ADV period, Prototype only. So, 
the problem comes up, the, the question comes up with the Thai X1 title, which some of you may be sitting there going, you know, it makes no sense. Others are going, well, yeah, it, it should because it has Thai and advanced in the name. So if you look at, and I apologize if you hear the clicking for my laptop, um, let's see, title, Tantive Thai X1. All right, the Thai X1 title says Thai Advanced Only. Advanced is spelled out completely, and then title. And of course, your upgrade bar gains the sensor upgrade icon. If you can equip, if you equip a sensor upgrade I upgrade, its squad point cost is reduced by four to minimum of zero. And it's a zero point upgrade. All right. So Thai slash X1 says in full writing. Thai advanced only. Period. Title. Period. The Thai V1 title says Thai ADV period prototype only. Now, under strict interpretation of page 20, the Thai advanced prototype does not equal a Thai advanced for name purposes for upgrades. This is where things have gotten interesting. Because some people claim, which I can I can see both sides of the argument, some people claim ADV is obviously shorthand for advanced, so therefore the X1 title should work on the advanced, on the, the advanced prototype. You have another camp that says no, this works like programming language, and ADV and Advance are not the same thing. I find myself leaning towards that camp, um, simply because I think this ship is not designed to carry a sensor package. Um, it would completely nullify the Thai Advanced if it did, because now you have an even cheaper platform to throw it on and you could throw accuracy corrector on a bunch of the Sinar guys and you, you've taken something that's already slightly broken and just as far as like the two dice not rolling them is already slightly broken if you could build a swarm of them that do that at 16 points a guy it's like 6 ships that never roll dice did you? always evade I don't think that's intended. Um, so that's the tangent that I was going to go down. That's that's the little that's the dangerous little road that I wanted to careen down for a moment because I see this being a problem um, in the future, and I think Fantasy Flight really needs to step in. They need to do an errata. They need to to bite the bullet. Um, and just do any rat it and say this is the way it is and deal with it. So, having said that, having done that, let's step back for a moment. Let's go ahead and go back into the Thai Advanced Prototype and what we're looking at here. Um, so, after the title, which mind you is a very good title, it makes it very, very action efficient push the limit on, on Valen or on the Inquisitor, you're doing three actions a turn. Um, Valen, you're actually doing more. Because you can do an action, wait till you get shot. Target lock. Well, your first action order will be target lock, get your free evade. You're doing four actions of Valen. Because then you get shot, you do two more actions. Yeah, it's really efficient. It's really cool. I don't fly Imperials, but I have to admit it's pretty fucking, pretty damn cool. I need to watch the language. Sorry. Um, Guidance Chip is our next card. It's a modification. Zero points. Once per round, when attacking with a torpedo or missile secondary weapon, you may change one die result to a hit result, and then in parentheses, or a critical result, if your primary weapon value is 3 or higher. 
I see this getting a place on certain ships that can carry multiple ordnance, such as Y-Wings, where the mod slot usually goes unused. Nera Dantles in a, in a B-Wing. I could see this being a thing. I could see this being a thing on a lot of ships. I like it. I think it's very good. I like the fact that it's zero points. It, it shows me they're really trying to make munitions work in this game. Um, but yeah, it, it's this is this is a step from them to try to try to push munitions back in. Um, the problem is it's overshadowed by things like turrets and, and, and cannons. So we'll see how this pans out for them. But overall, I think it's a good modification, or a good, yeah, it's a good modification. I've played against someone who proxied it. When it goes off, it goes off and it hurts. So, because it, it always goes off, but when, it, you know, when it's being used and they have a decent die roll to back it up, this hurts. So, and if they have a bad die roll, they are always guaranteed to at least get a hit. So the next thing we're going to go into here is the XX-23S Thread Tracers. Um, these made their debut in the X, the uh, the Rebels TV show. Um, they were like a plot thing, basically. But it's a missile, one point, three attack dice, um, attack focus, range one to three. I'm going all out of order here. It's range one to three, three attack dice, one point, missile. Attack, focus, discard this card to perform this attack. If this attack hits, each friendly ship at range 1 to 2 of you may acquire a target lock on the defender, then cancel all dice results. Okay, so essentially here you're giving away your shot to make your squad far more efficient. I don't think this is a bad card because target lock is a persistent thing so it's it's persistent it's something that they can you can hand out target locks to a bunch of people and they'll have those later on um, if you're flying with a few normal tie advances in the squad or if you're flying normal tie advance and you give one of them this that one guy sacrifices his shot to give everybody uh, give everybody target locks. Yeah, sure. Um, it's not a bad card at all. It's not great, but it, it adds a huge amount of points efficiency. Um, it also adds points efficiency on on the side of you know both sides there though. So you know rebels and empire and even scum benefit from that. So our next thing here, and our final thing tonight, is the dial. Now the dial for the Inquisitor's TIE Fighter, um, the Inquisitor's TIE Advanced, is kind of interesting. It'll seem a little familiar. Uh, this is a fast ship. Uh, we're going to start off in the ones. It has a one turn, one bank, green. All right, so your one turns and your one banks are green. Your twos, your two turn, two bank are white. Your two straight is green. Your threes, you have a three turn and a three bank, also white. Three straight green. You have a four straight, also green. A four K turn, red. And a five straight, white. Where the tie advanced shadowed the X-Wing a lot in its dial and its capabilities. The TIE Advanced prototype seems to do the same with the T-70 X-Wing. Um, we'll get into the T-70 a little bit later, but it seems to it seems to share a lot in common with the T-70. It's a very good dial. Most of your greens are either straights or in the one range. So Things like push the limit could be limiting on this ship because you're going to have to account for being able to do stuff at, at, 
a Speed 2, Speed 3. Um, twin Ion Engine Mark II might be, be a thing on these because of the fact that now you're opening up more of your dial to be green. So you could take Push to Limit Twin Ion Engine Mark II and uh, you're very effective at, at doing what you need to do as far as being able to shed stress after you do a push to the limit. Um, but yeah, that's it for the TIE Advanced Prototype Preview. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, if you liked it, or the podcast, or whatever I am now, I, I, I have no clue. If you've enjoyed this, though, go ahead, like it, subscribe. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to put a lot more stuff. We're going to start doing the uh, weekly mini podcasts for um, because we're getting re- getting into tournament season and I'm going to, I mean it's more of a personal podcast but I want to do it every week um, after I go to the store on Tuesdays and it'll be covering both our progress with getting better at playing, playing as a, a game and it'll also cover the progress of our X-Wing or not X-Wing but our Star Wars RPG group and what's going on with them so until next time um, I really don't have a catchphrase. I've tried fly casual. I've tried take it easy. I don't have one. So until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye.